Welcome back to another chapter in the Theme Park Wizard Attraction History Series. This, the, this time we're trying to talk about the Haunted Mansion attraction at Disneyland Park. It's a very iconic attraction, many people's favorite. So let's get to it. I'm very excited about this one. So the idea for the Haunted Mansion precedes Disneyland and WED Enterprises. It was dating all the way back to when Walt Disney hired the first of his Imagineers. So it's like... Talk about an original day attraction, an original concept. At that time, the park, um, at the park they were developing an attraction that was supposed to be located across from Walt Disney Studios in Burbank. By 1951, the first known illustration of the park showed a Main Street setting, Greenfields, a Western Village, and a carnival. The Disney legend Harper Goff developed a black and white sketch of a crooked street leading away from Main Street by a peaceful church and graveyard with a rundown manor perched high on a hill that towered on Main Street. Obviously seemed to be setting the stage for the a creep at least a creepy attraction. Disney Imagineer Ken Anderson or Disney Walt Disney assigned Imagineer Ken Anderson to create a story using Goff's idea. Plans were eventually made for a New Orleans themed area to kind of bridge the gap between Frontierland and Adventureland so that it wouldn't be so, um, the, the transition wouldn't be so jarring. And it turns out, of course, New Orleans Square is one of the best themed, if not the best themed land in Disneyland today. Weeks later, New Orleans, New Orleans Square appeared on the souvenir map and promised a thieves' market, a pirate wax museum, and a haunted house walkthrough. It's funny because those attractions, um, Thieves Market, I'm not sure if that's there, that, that could maybe be like the gumbo shop or whatever. Pirate Max Museum turned into Pirates of the Caribbean, and Haunted House Walkthrough is, of course, the Haunted Mansion, so it's funny how, to see how these guys evolved from what seemed like simple concepts, but elaborate concepts, to even more elaborate and better concepts the one, and to the ones that we are, uh, obviously, we have today at the park. Uh, Mr. Anderson studied studied New Orleans and the plantations and came up with the drawing of an antebellum manor overgrown with weeds, dead trees, swarms of bats, and boarded doors and windows topped by a screeching cat as a weather vane. So if you're everyone who's wondering why the Haunted Mansion looks different in Florida versus New Orleans, er, uh, Disneyland, it's because this is just a creepy, real life like looking New Orleans type house, ranch house, where it looks more like a like kind of like a fantasy or haunted like an actual haunted mansion in the Magic Kingdom. I personally like our New Orleans or our haunted mansion look better because that could actually be a a style of house you see in Louisiana and it could actually be haunted because those houses are very old dating to the eighteen hundreds in some cases. Disney rejected the idea of having a run down building his park. So, instead, he went up to the Winchester Mystery House, which is in northern California, or central northern California, about San Jose. And he studied, went through, took a tour. The Winchester, by the way, is one of, if not the most haunted houses or places in the state of California. There's a recent movie on it called The Winchester House, or Winchester Manor, I believe. Um, it should be on Netflix right now, or you can check it out. But that's why Disney specifically chose to check out that house, because it's, again, a pristine, very nice, wealthy manor, but very, very haunted. He was captivated by the massive mansion, because it had stairs that led to nowhere, doors that opened to walls and holes and elevators. Anderson envisioned stories for the mansion, including tales of a ghostly sea captain who killed his nosy bride and then hanged himself. The uh, stretching room scene. Uh, a mansion home to an unfortunate family, a ghostly wedding party with well-known Disney villains and spooks. There's kind of like all of that inside the mansion, but definitely the sea captain hanging, hanging himself and the bride. Then uh, Anderson brought Imagineers Raleigh Crump responsible for the Matterhorn, and Yell Gracie um, to on long to, for the attraction. They recreated some of these stories in a studio at what was then called Wed Enterprises. <laughs> so some years went by and the World's Fair happened, and after the World's Fair, 
Imagineers Mark Davis, ex uh, Atencio, and Claude Coates came onto the project while Ken Anderson left the project by this time. Raleigh Crump uh, showed Walt some ideas for some of his versions, which included really crazy objects like coffin clocks, candle men, talking chairs, man eating plants, tiki like butts, uh, busts, living gypsy wagons, and a mare with a face. Walt seemed to really like these ideas, and he wanted to make a, a separate attraction called the Museum of the World, which would be like a restaurant like the Blue Bayou, but for the Haunted Mansion. Um, and it kind of would be like, you know, you can eat at the restaurant or go to the attraction, but they kind of interact with each other, just like, again, with Blue Bayou and Pirates does. The concept was never realized, but some of the stuff that was supposed to be in the Museum of the World appeared into the Haunted Mansion that we know and love today as well. Mark Davis and Claude Coates were two of the museum's designers, and they disagreed on or one wanted to one of the uh, one wanted the ride to be frightening and one wanted the ride to be enjoyable. But they eventually got a ride that was frightening and enjoyable. They got some silly elements and got some scary elements, so it's enjoyable really for the entire family. When Walt Disney died in December 1996, the project really did change significantly. The Museum of the Weird Restaurant was completely abandoned. The Imagineers didn't want to walk through attraction because they um, said it had low capacity. Same thing kind of like with Pirates, how they didn't want to walk through attraction there because of a low capacity. And they even suggested building two identical attractions to double the capacity. It's just something that's funny. They still do that today with things like the Double Dumbos and Magic Kingdom Park and the double primeval worlds that are now gone at Animal Kingdom. But instead, they went with the Omni Omni Mover system that they have used for the recently opened, at the time, Adventure Through Inner Space. They renamed the ride vehicles Doom Buggies, and they, they, fear, they, they figured it went well with the story, considering they only held, each Doom Buggy held about one to three people, which kind of went with about a story of one person or like a small group of people inside a creepy hallway at one time, which is pretty cool. So after all that, employee previews of the Haunted Mansion were held on August 6th, 7th, and 8th. They were followed by soft openings on August 9th and 10th, and then there was a special midnight press event on, held on the evening of August 11th. And then the mansion officially opened to August on August 12th, 1969, where it just celebrated its 60th anniversary in 2019. Um, and it was nice to, I was, I was and not in the park on that day, but I was around the park for that, uh, around that week. It was very nice, and it's awesome to see the mansion still here 60 years later, and let's see if it will still be here 100 years later without any significant changes. One last, uh, Tidbit here, 2001, as we all know, the Haunted Mansion Holiday Overlay came to Tokyo Disneyland and Disney, or from Tokyo Disneyland came to Disneyland Park. It's widely popular and it still continues today. It's, it would be its 20th anniversary this year, actually, of the Haunted Mansion Holiday. Should it come back this year when the parks reopen? And um, yeah, uh, it happens. It goes for about five months out of the year. It goes through Halloween, through Christmas, all the way through January 7th or late January. And then it reverts back to its normal mansion for the spring and summertime. If you guys like this, please like this, uh, press the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments, be comments below what other attraction videos I should do, attraction history videos. And then subscribe for more theme park updates and more fun attraction videos just like this. Everyone have a fantastic day and be safe out there.